I will here give the impression of the various types of meteorites and how these look like when we cut them open, but also for some from the outside. And I will start here with the chondrites. Now chondrites come from undifferentiated parent bodies. This means these still contain components that formed free floating in the early solar system. So when you look at this ordinary chondrite here, we can see it has quite a speckled appearance. Now, most of these speckles are chondrules. In fact, an ordinary chondrite consists of up to 80 volume percent of these chondrules here. This is a close-up from the same meteorite, and we can see here all these round objects, quite a large one here, smaller ones over here, all these round objects, but also broken ones. These are all the chondrules, and as I said, these ordinary chondrites consist of 80 volume percent of these chondrules. Squeezed in between the chondrules is matrix material that is difficult to see because it's quite fine-grained. And then there are a couple of additional um, components here. So all these chondrules that we can see here formed free-floating individually in the protoplanetary disk a couple of millions of years before the planets formed. And they then accreted together to form this meteorite, which means the parent body of this meteorite. If you would look at some different types of chondrites, carbonaceous chondrites or other ordinary chondrites, it would look essentially the same, although in case of, for example, carbonaceous chondrites, there would be more matrix material in between. So these are two additional um, images of ordinary chondrites. Again, you can see the quite speckled appearance here, which are again all these chondrules. This is an iron meteorite, and this is from the outside. And you can see this quite indented surface here, which forms while the meteorite is traveling through the Earth's atmosphere, it's getting hot, and some small eddies from the atmosphere then produces these indents, which are called red mark lights. This is uh, another image just from another angle. Now, when we cut open an iron meteorite, it might look like this. Not always, and not immediately. These structures we see here are two different types of metal, camasite and tainite. They differ in the abundance of nickel. Both are iron nickel, but camasite um, is more nickel poor and tainite is more nickel rich. And we can only see this when cut open the meteorite, polish it, and then etch it with, for example, some nitric acid. And because the various phases are, have a different resistance to the acid, they then form this kind of, or um, reveal the, to the structure of the camasite and tainite intergrowth. But this is not always the case, as can be seen in this uh, iron meteorite, where we don't see this kind of structure. It really depends, for example, on the cooling history. Some of the blebs we might see in iron meteorites uh, could be sulfides. Very often is sulfide. This is a palisite. This also comes from a different jade parent body, from the, likely from the border between core and mantle, where the silicate and metal mixes. So all the, the green, um, bits here are silicate, typically olivine, and well, what is more reflecting is the, the metal. So this is a mixture of the silicate, the olivine, and the metal from the core of an asteroid. This is a close-up. These are um, often quite aesthetically pleasing meteorites, in particular if there's light coming through the, the olivines in a thin slab. This is a eucrite coming so this is a, a mantle bit from an asteroid, um, likely coming from the asteroid uh, Vesta. And if we would uh, study this in more detail, we see that this has more magmatic-like structure. This is an aubrite. This is another example for a mantle rock. Again, if you would study this in more detail, it would have more um, magmatic uh, texture, although this has a quite clastic structure here. And then we when we go to the biggest meteorite in the world, which is in Namibia, we even have street signs directing us to this meteorite and um, also some, um, well, sort of funny warnings here. And then this is the Hoba meteorite. This is also an iron meteorite. It has more than about 60 tons and they now build this little amphitheater around it because um, they try to move it, but it's simply too heavy to really uh, move it. And if you need to scale, so this is how, how big the meteorite is about. Then there are also meteorites from the moon. So this is a um, uh, 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 that is from the moon. 
This is a piece of Mars from the outside and this is how it looks from the inside. Of course, Moon and Mars both come from differentiated parent bodies, so this has quite a magmatic structure here. And finally, there are not only meteorites on Earth, but of course there are also meteorites on other parent bodies. And this was the first meteorite discovered on uh, Mars. This is an iron meteorite. When NASA went there with the rovers and they wanted after the mission with the rover was more or less finished and then the technician said could we maybe go back to the heat shield of the of the entry module which was lying a couple of a distance away and then they drove there and finally beside the heat shield there was also a meteorite so this is why it's called heat shield rock and it's a meteorite and in the meantime there were a number of other meteorites discovered also on Mars but of course this is not a phenomenon unique to Earth. So this is, in brief, how uh, meteorites look like when we cut them open.